Hey everybody, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we are working on page four and five of Japan, Vagabond in Japan. And um, these are going to be mirror images, and it's going to be a little bit clearer after we get our um, decorator paper on why I decided to do it this way. I think it's kind of cool. So um, we are, I've already done part of one, and I'm going to show you how it works. And then we're going to build page four together. <clears throat> I haven't finished putting everything down, but we have this tab that's going to go through a slot. It can be a slot, or I used a, just a circle punch. Um, to pull this back through. So once this is glued to the page, um, basically what's going to happen is you're going to pull on it and it's going to open up and reveal what's on your base page. So I just wanted to give you kind of a quick overview of what that looks like so you know where we're headed. So let me give you the measurements of everything you're going to need. You're going to need a strip that's one inch by nine. One inch by nine, you're going to score a half inch on the nine inch side. And you're going to need one for page four, and one for page five. So a total of two, and in the banner, it's just gonna tell you what you need, you know, for the first page, you only need one. The other thing you're going to need, and I don't know where I say, here they are, are two one by eight and a half inch strips, one inch by eight and a half inches across, and we're gonna glue these two things together, and this, um, did I cut that? Not, yeah, this one's too long, it says nine, but I cut, I didn't, uh, I didn't trim it. So when we get done, what we should have is the stiffener laying right on top. <clears throat> and actually we want to glue it on the flip side uh, to help stiffen this as, so that when you're pulling and there's all this paper on top that this um, cardstock is strong enough. So I'm going to glue it on the flip side to stiffen this up. Let me get my glue, here it is. <clears throat> You can tape it if you like. I'm gonna glue it and then I'm gonna make sure that um, it fits through the slot that I created. And if not, trim it before I apply it uh, to the flip side. And it looks like I didn't trim this wide, uh, narrow enough. So I probably will have to run it through the trimmer. <clears throat> but its only purpose is to stiffen this piece. If you want, you could have made this two inches scored it in half, glued it together, and then scored a half inch. But honestly, I didn't want this flange here to be double thick. I just want the strip to be double thick. So that's where I came up with my measurements. And you can, you can see, clearly see it's too wide. So that's pretty much in space. And I'm staying away from the score line space so there's not too much build up there, okay? I'm going to burnish this in place, put it in the trimmer, trim it up, then we're going to add it to the pop-up mechanism. Right back. Oh, my trimmer made a mess. Okay, I think it's time to invest in a new trimmer. This has been happening more and more lately where I get these super rough edges, especially when I'm trying to trim really tight. So I'm gonna see if I can find a new blade and if I can't, I'm gonna invest in a, in a new trimmer. For those of you that are interested, I'm gonna go big and I'm gonna go with Rota Trim, which I think is an excellent trimmer, um, but it is on the spendy side. But I have no complaints about my Caterpillar. I, I've had it um, for quite some time, longer than any other trimmer I've had, and I, I use it a lot. So I definitely feel like at $100, $150, I got my money's worth. Or I think it was actually less than that. But I had spent, you know, $40 here, $40 there on uh, Fisker trimmers. You know, and none of them last that long. So over time, I wound up just changing them out all the time. Well, I'm really having a hard time cutting a straight line. The trimmer bent my cardstock, so I'm having a hard time getting it to, to cut straight. Okay, one more time. So at the end of this, what you what you hope to have is a, a straight edge. <laughs> Seems to be eluding me, but hopefully you'll have better luck. Um, a straight edge, and you have... Um, a pull tab that is one inches 
by nine and then one inches by eight and a half on the flip side. So the stiffener is a half inch shorter, a little more than a half inch shorter because you want to stay out of the gusset. And I'm going to try one more time to straighten that out before we apply it. And I can see I've got a rough spot here and here. I think part of the problem is I'm trying to now trim through glue on top of the cardstock. Okay, this is my last attempt to get a good clean cut. <laughs> Yay! I think I, well, no, I almost did it. I got a little tab here on it to use my scissors and freehand. The very end of this is going to have uh, uh, some decorative paper on it, so it doesn't matter if it's perfectly straight or not. Okay, so now you've got your second piece, which is eight and a half by seven. It's eight and a half across, seven inches tall. You're gonna score a half inch on the eight and a half inch side, and then you're gonna score again at four and a half. Okay, we're gonna add tape to the score area. And you can see I punched a hole. And that's where the strip of paper is going to come through. So I'm going to trim the extra tape off. And again, this is just a one inch punch. If you want to do a decorative punch here, whatever, but it needs to be at least one inch wide. You can also make this um, pull tab wider if you want to, but I didn't want it to interfere too much with the design of what's going on in the paper. Okay, so we've got a hinge here, we've got a hinge here. You're going to turn this over this way. It's going to get attached to this side and it's going to pull through that side. So we want to find the center line of both. This is seven and a half. That means it's one, uh, three and a half inches down is where we're going to find the center line to adhere our tape to, or our, our tab, flange to. Hinge, having a hard time finding my words, sorry. So the back side of this is not gonna show, okay? So what we're trying to do is line it up just like so. I'm gonna take my tape off. Okay, and I'm looking to line this up center mm. that looks good comes across comes through here and then it's going to pull like so i keep turning it upside down it should be this way the um the pull tab should be on your left hand side for page four so that is the pop-up mechanism. So we're going to apply it to page four. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a half inch inset on either side. So I'm gonna give myself some markers here to help me lay it down flat, straight. Okay, and then we wanna come across and install this at half inch. And when we're done, we're going to add a decorative, um, I said half one inch, it's half inch, a decorative um, half inch strip there. So now we're going to remove the tape here and apply it here. And you can just remove your, your pull tab for now. And then we can run it back through when we're ready. <clears throat> The top and bottom are going to be flush with the edge of the pocket page. Okay, so that's in. Push that into place. Now we can slip our strap, our strap through here. And so the way this page is going to function is you're going to pull on this tab and it's going to open like so. Okay. Now we're going to do the same thing for page five. Now on page five, I went ahead and already attached my strap, but I have not stiffened it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and add my strip. 
And um, don't add your strip before you stiffen it because it just gets a lot harder to trim it. Um, but I was I had built the prototype firsthand so that I would know what to tell you guys to do. So I had to kind of go through the process in order to have um, the measurements ready for you guys and, and to have tested it. So that's why this is here. And that's also why I decided after going through this test process that it needed to be stiffened. Because once you add the extra weight of the decorative paper on um, on these elements, it's going to get a lot heavier. So, so that's on. So we have our strip, and it actually doesn't look like it needs to be trimmed. But, and they're going to be opposite of each other. So we are going to install this on the right hand side. I'm going to come up a half an inch from the right hand side yeah it shifted sorry okay half inch from the one inch side I'm gonna remove my tape here and add it and I'm gonna go ahead and get that out of the way Sideways. It's going to marry right up to that half inch line. Should be flush with the top and bottom edges of the pocket page. It's pretty straight. Then we'll tuck our, our strip through the hole. There we go. And then when this is all installed, it's going to work like that. So when you have these, the idea that I had behind this design is, let me clean up my workspace a little, is that um, these, when you open them up, would very much look like Japanese screen doors um, and how the bifold of a screen door, if you've ever seen uh, the room dividers, that kind of thing. So the way we decorate it is going to go a long way to helping that look uh, or pull you into that sort of design aesthetic. So that's it for now on the construction of page four and five. Very simple, um, pretty simple design. Um, and I'm, oh, actually what I want to do is I do want to add a magnet here. So because we have these score lines in the middle, it doesn't want to stay down. So we're going to add a magnet here and here. Let me get a couple of magnets. I think we're going to add it here and here. Yeah, I think so. That way it'll stay nice and flat. So... Where do I want to add it? So my, I'm kind of hemming and hawing because I don't know if I want to add it on this stiffener strip or if I want to add it on a different part of this panel. And I'm going to try it on the stiffener strip first. And I think that's where I want it, but we'll find out in a minute. Now I am going to do a decorative strip here, so I want to make sure that I'm staying away from that half inch mark on the um, right side of this page. I'm actually going to pull my pull it out, open it all the way up. Make sure that I'm putting this a good inch inside, and then we'll find the location for the opposite one. And then I want to test it and see if it's behaving the way I want it to. And if not, then we're going to locate it on the top part of the um, this large bifold flap. I don't know what else to call it. So what I want to make sure is that when I pull my tab through, that it's laying flat and the page is laying flat as I locate the magnet. Let's see how that does. It's not laying quite as flat as I'd like it to. I'm not sure if it's because I don't have enough tape on the magnet. Hold on. But we may have to relocate it. Let's see. Let's try one more time. Yeah, that's too much of a bow here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply my magnet over here off the, um, the stiffener. Okay. And it could go above or below. 
again, you still need to make sure that you're within an inch because we're going to probably have a half inch um, color blocking here, which means a half inch in where we'd have a black strip that we want to make sure we don't have a magnet showing through. <laughs> that did not do what I wanted it to do. It's sticking to me. Okay. I think this is the flip side. Yeah. Okay, let's pull it through. Make sure that we're holding it down and that the strip is all the way through. Much, much better result. So it's not so puffy now. Okay. And then when you close it, it should help snap into place and you can hear it slightly. Okay, if you really like a strong adhesion, put one on either side. I think I'm going to go with just one. So we're going to repeat that over here on page five. As soon as I get all this tape off my fingers. Okay. Okay. Pull the flange out. Come in. It's an, at least an inch. I'm gonna use my wide tape, it's much better. Although, this won't be covered. So we might actually have to put a piece of black over it. The way this operates, the backside of this doesn't really show uh, at all. So I'm not planning on putting any designer paper there. I may put a piece of black cardstock over the magnet on this side, which is the flap side, the bifold flap side. So now let's test it and make sure it's doing what I expect. Yep, can you hear it? Ever so quietly. All right. And then um, on the collectibles, um, which is the A4 pack, there is a whole sheet of these circles. They are one inch circles, and that's awesome because you can use those for pull tabs and various things. So they're designed, you know, to, you could use it as a sheet of um, a pattern, but I'm going to use them in this case for pull tabs. So when we go to add the decorator paper, which is our next step, we will be adding these to these poles. And that is what's going to help us know that this is, you know, this is an interactive page and, and you get the action by pulling on the tab. Okay. Thanks, everybody. I'll be back soon with the decorator paper. Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we are working on page four and five of Sir Vagabond. And this is kind of a, it, it's not kind of, it's a very tedious two pages because I did a ton of color blocking, as you can see. So what I decided to do was finish page four so we, so you guys could see what the finished product's gonna look like, and then we're gonna build page five together. So if you recall, and this is these are two just border strips, we have this pull tab that'll open up the page, and the idea is that that sort of, you know, is, reminiscent of a, a screen or a room divider. And um, so this is page four, and then we're gonna, like I said, build page five together. So we have these two border strips. I have this pull tab, and then I've used a one inch circle, which cuts out the uh, images on the back of the A4. There's a whole page of just circles, and the, it's exactly a one inch circle, so you can just use your punch to do that. And then the other thing I am going to share with you now that I've showed you what it looks like finished, I'm going to pull in page five. Um, what I decided to do uh, after the initial build was I decided, yeah, I did, to add a sec second magnet. So there's two magnets, both on page four and five. So this is what it looks like before we start to decorate or anything. The first thing you're going to want to do is trim off this excess. And I just flipped it over and used an X-Acto knife to trim it. Let's 
There we go. It was just a little bit longer than the page. Okay, now we have these two sides. And I need a contrast sheet for you guys. So this is inset a half inch on this side. And then this flap finishes a half inch before the edge. So hopefully you can see that. So that's where we're going to put those two strips of um, this paper, one on each side, like so. And I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. <clears throat> and this is definitely from one of the 12 by 12s, but I can't tell you which one. It was a border strip, and this is what it looked like before I trimmed it down to just that image. Which is interesting because it actually looks more Egyptian than Asian to me, but I don't know. Okay, so I'm just checking to see which one is going to fit better on which side. Um, because on one side, you're going to be able to actually tuck it underneath the flap, and the other, you're butting into um, a hinge. So now I'm going to look at them both side by side and see if one's thinner than the other. And of course, they're very close. But yes, this one's a little bit thinner. So I'm going to save that one for the outside. I'm going to go ahead and pull my strap through and then go ahead and lay this down. And like I said, it's not difficult, but it's very tedious. There's a lot of measuring here. Um, I'm going to give you three measurements that are the base for the page after I get these um, borders down. Okay, so that's in. Now let's see about getting the side in. Sorry for the sniffling, but man, I have had a heck of a time for the last three weeks with sinus infection after aggravation and just goes on and on. <clears throat> Okay, I just wanted to slide that under so I could get a little space to tuck this. And I was just trying to lift that tape ever so slightly, and I think I did. So that's going to work. The other thing is you could have put the strips down first before you put this on. But honestly, I didn't know what I was going to use as a border strip at the time. The other thing is if you can't get it tucked under, you can always trim your slip your sorry strip thinner. Although anything beyond this, it's not. Di I have a hard time getting a straight line between my trimmer, eyesight. I just have a real struggle with that. So this is the in inside image. It's going to go this way. It looks like I might need to trim it just a tiny bit in width. So I'm going to do that real quick. I'll be right back. By the way, this is from the 8x8 collection pack. The strips, the border strips, are from the 12 by 12 pack. Okay, that looks good. We're going to ink it and lay it down. Then we'll focus on the, the front where all the color blocking is. That's where kind of all the time is going to be spent. And... I got some comments today 
um, you know, I had mentioned in the, um, the bass album build that I've just been a bit under the weather and I have, and I apologize. Things are taking so long to get out, but I'm fine. So don't worry. It's just, I was doing something different here. I, I wasn't using, um, one of my regular bass album builds. So I was dealing with new measurements and, you know, every time you change the size of your albums, it sort of changes um, your paper planning. It doesn't sort of, it absolutely changes your paper planning. And um, I actually had planned and built a good part of this project before I realized I had to scale it down um, in order to um, finish the project with um, what I thought was a reasonable amount of paper. So I apologize for that, but it's a live and learn. It was kind of like the Aesop's Fables. I, you know, when you look at it, you're like, oh, it doesn't seem that complicated. And it really isn't. But I had to build it, you know, a couple of times before I knew exactly how much paper I was going to need. So, that, you know, that's kind of the challenge. Um, so there we go. Okay, so we've got the borders and we have what's going to be the inside layout. This is where you would naturally lay your pictures. And then what we're going to do here is, is mirror this image. So make sure you're patient because <laughs> it's going to take a little time. But there are a few things that are pretty standard. The red strip on the top and the bottom are both three quarter inches. So it's three quarter inches tall and it is one and seven eighths inch wide. And you'll need four of those to go across um, what I've turned into four sections, but what are really two sections. So if this feels too complicated to you, you could have just done one here, one here, one here, and one here. But I thought it looked more like a Japanese screen if I added it into these smaller segments. So that's the thought process there. Three quarters of an inch, three quarters of an inch, one inch. So how do we get it all installed? Well, here's the same page as here. And um, I'm going to install everything here. And then we're going to come back and add the little tab, which again is just a one inch circle off the uh, uh, A4 pack. And let me see if I can find it for you. So you, yeah, it's right here. So this is the A4 pack or what they call the collections pack. And it turns out that all these circles are exactly one inch. So your one inch punch is just going to be perfect. So I'm going to apply one there. I'm going to trim the corners down, but we'll do that together in a few minutes. Sorry. <clears throat> okay. So the first thing we're going to do is start to lay down our... Three quarter inch strip. And this actually goes pretty pretty quick. And we're gonna do that across the board. And I'm gonna jump up and make sure that I'm actually recording because I can't do this again. Okay. Because I just don't have enough uh, paper. It's a little tight. Okay. Now I'm going to do my next next one. Oh, ooh, that looks a little too too slight. The other way I thought about doing this was to have a continuous piece and then just lay down a black strip. And then I looked at it that way and I just wasn't happy with the results. So it's, it is an alternate method. But when you start to see them side by side, you can get sort of the image that I had in my mind of, you know, a Japanese screen. I haven't pressed these down into place because I want to see if I need to move them left or right. Okay. 
Okay, so again, the red pieces are three quarters of an inch, top and bottom. And this is just from the wave pattern page. So you should have plenty of this left over. This is um, the last page that I'm building. Oh, I probably should have moved that down. This is the last page I'm building. So whatever I have, you should have left over. Now the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna draw a line, a reference line, that goes halfway through here. And that's three and a half is the midpoint. It's jumping right onto the magnets. Three and a half. We'll just draw a quick pencil line through that. <laughs> the magnets really have to fight it because it wants to stay on the magnet. Okay, that's going to be the reference line for our black pieces. Our black pieces came from the eight by eight backgrounds pack. Now we're going to line the bottom of it up with this line. We're just going to slightly cover it so we don't have to erase it. So like I said, I think it's very tedious. I think it's pretty when it's done, but not everybody's up for it. You could easily do um, a four by seven full panel to cover the space if you don't want to spend your time uh, cutting bits. Now, that should have gone over a little bit more. Uh, whoops. Now I have these strips and they, uh, one of them, the strips that you see on page four came from a 12 by 12 and the strips that you're gonna see on page five came from the A4 most of them came from the A4 collection pack it was the back side and then one strip came from the 12 by 12 I just didn't have two 12 by 12s left over to place here which is kind of the interesting thing about paper planning is you know I come to this page and I know I want them to look like mirror images or very similar at least the flow um, just because of the nature of the design and I was really trying to get this sort of Japanese um, room divider effect and then this is one of the last pages I covered and I realized at the end I was really struggling with finding patterns that um, work together well um, that I could use um, so it's interesting you know there's pros and cons to going page by page there's pros and cons by going layout by layout when i say layout i mean the opposing pages so you know it, it's up and down i just struggled with this one because i knew what i wanted to do and i didn't want to spend the time doing all that measuring and cutting um early on in the album design so it's a there's a like i said pros and cons to both okay i'm putting these back in order okay now between this red Part of the screen and the black part I'm going to actually mark and trim this to fit this is where the time comes in okay now I'm going to trim that glue it in and then this will be what's left over and then I need to um, trim to fit again so we're going to do that literally eight times just on this page but it's a total of 16 times that's why it's so time consuming Okay. So there we are. There's our top and bottom. We're going to see how it fits. 
And I think it fits pretty good. We're going to ink it and lay it down. <clears throat> I'm sorry for the constant throat clearing, but I have a very severe sore throat. So I may not talk as much as you guys would like. because I'm, I'm really starting to lose my voice. And I just realized, oh, it's so aggravating, but I'm going to do it anyway. This pattern's upside down. And by the way, it doesn't matter what pattern you choose for this. It's the idea of having this uh, three-quarter inch, one inch, three-quarter inch, and then some consistent pattern in the middle. This could be any pattern. Um, you'll get the same effect. I just think it's really pretty. I think side-by-side side it's going to be very... Uh, eye-catching. Eh. <clears throat> so frustrating. I can't see in this light and, uh, I have no paper to waste. Okay, a couple more. We're getting there. <clears throat> My goodness. <clears throat> So it's hard to see, um, I think, from your angle, but when I'm trying to measure the size of this, what I'm, I can't just go straight on straight because then it covers up the edge of the where I'm going. So what I want to do is have a distance between the top and this and then mark a distance between the next color, which in this case is black. And if I just lined it straight up, it would cover up the black. So I'm doing it off center, if that makes sense. And then I'm marking it. 
And if it sticks out a little and you don't need to go off center, great. But just to let you know what I'm what I'm seeing. Which isn't necessarily what you're seeing, especially because of the color of the paper. I'm going to make sure I'm going right side. Yep. Okay. So again, this started as one continuous pattern that I sliced uh, vertically and then horizontally. And if you do a little bit of research and look at uh, Japanese screens online, real Japanese screens online, if they have a pattern in them, that's, that's where it is. It's in the light part of the screen. Um, and that's what I was trying to mimic here. Okay, we're getting there. We're getting there. I'm going to move that over to the side so I can see the top. And by the way, I, I can see I left some pencil marks, so I'm going to get that out of the way. Hi, Nala. Nala says hi, everybody. Oh, you should put your head up here a little closer. People could see you. <laughs> she comes in and puts her, her nose under my elbow to make me pay attention. Yes, good girl. Okay, so um, the other thing I want to let you know is my next album's uh, definitely going to be a graphic 45. I'm not sure which collection. There's so many beautiful ones. It's definitely going to be Christmas. I don't know if it's going to be Nutcracker or the, I think it's called Let It Snow. Um, but it's definitely going to be a Christmas collection because if you guys are doing Christmas uh, albums, I mean, you need that out immediately, right? <laughs> okay. So this was from, and you can see the breakup in the pattern. It's disappointing, but it happens. This this was from the collectibles pack. And then I didn't have enough because it's not, as you can see, it's not wide enough to cover all four of these sections. And um, now I'm having to pull in either this or this. And it's not that bad, but it's, it's not perfect, right? This is the other option I have is this was the leftover from the 12 by 12. So I could do that and that. And that's what I'm going to do. I like it better than the other one. So, well, it's that or this. Yeah, see, there's too much gray here, and I think it just breaks it up too much. So, last chance for this one. Not enough flow. I'm going to go with this. Now, if I had it to do over again, this probably would have been on this side, but c'est la vie. So, I'm going to trim these down the same way I've trimmed every other one, and I don't think you guys need to sit and watch me do that because you've got the hang of it. It is going to take some time. Make sure that you have clearance for um, the peak when you open it up. And then before we go away, I am going to share with you that we are going to put a little tab on here. And I cut this out with a one inch punch. And then I cut a black one out with a one inch punch. <clears throat> and I'm going to glue it down. Is that what I'm going to do? Yep, yep it is. I'm going to glue it down on the edge here, and then I'm going to trim the two corners off. Actually, the whole thing gets glued down. Yeah. I'm 
going to straighten that out a little bit. There we go. And then I'm going to trim around it real quick with just a pair of scissors. It's not that easy to do because if you remember, we already put a stiffener on there. So the tab is twice as thick. There we go. <clears throat> now the idea is that you, the back side of this is only um, half uh, cardstock and it goes underneath. Then I'm going to put a little reinforcement on the front. So you're going to have this round circle. You're going to punch another round circle. It could be out of any paper. I use black. You're only going to glue half of it, but it's going to be two circles stacked, half of it glued. Then you're going to take a half circle on the front side. And that's just going to help it stand off so it doesn't want to go under the page. So the idea here is that you pull your tab like so. And then when you release it, the top piece goes on top of the page and it doesn't slide underneath. So you've got a stiffener on the top and then a stiffener in the back. Full circle in the back, half circle in the front. And then when you go to close it, that's going to want to stay on top. Okay, that's that. Here's a little bit of glue there. So I also realized when I was constructing it and finishing it, I mean, I had originally thought about doing a slot here instead of a half circle. And in the end, I think the, um, the half circle makes it easy to work with, but you don't really need it. And so I, when I was actually done, I fed this back through and then just reinforced my half circle. So there's no risk of it actually tearing. So you might want to consider that too. So in the next few minutes, I'm going to go ahead and trim and cut out these pieces. Like I said, you guys don't need to watch me do that. You can do that on your own. And then um, in a second, after I get the, the lower piece on, I'll show you how I reinforce the, the uh, circle punch. Okay, so I finished laying this out and I told you I'd go off and do it on my own. You can see here how the paper behind it is peeking through. And so the way we're gonna solve that is we've just cut a small strip that we're going to glue over this. We don't want it to be too close to the edge because I think it's too hard for the um, tab to go through. <clears throat> So we want glue on these two little bits. Make sure you remember there's a seam in between that you don't want to cover. Okay, and then we're going to come down, lay this in. Make sure you're clear of the score line. Let's let that dry for a second since I was being messy. And then um, we'll close everything up. And then... Of course, this is all naked and that's fine because you're not going to see the inside based on the way the mechanism works. Having said all that, I do think instead of just leaving the tape there, we should go ahead and cover it with cardstock. And you'll want to do that on both pages. So there should be two magnets, both pages. Just cut your paper to fit right over your tape. <clears throat> I recommend adding glue because... We didn't cut the um, cardstock to an exact fit. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Perfect. Now we'll burnish those down. Oops. Oops, I thought I'd gotten my. Uh, Teflon first, but it didn't. Okay, make sure all your glue is dry before you try to lay it back over. You don't want to accidentally glue anything down. All right, 
And now you don't have to worry about accidentally um, pulling off the back of the tape and somehow having it get stuck on your designer paper. Okay. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna feed this right back through the slot. Okay, just like so. And then because of the way we did the um, tab here, it should pull through and then stop and not go under, but to come across just like so. Okay, that's it. That's page five and that's page four. And I think they're pretty cool. It's a little bit of a tug because of the two magnets, but it keeps the page very flat when um, your album's not open. Okay, I think it's kind of cool. All right, I hope you guys liked it. Uh, next time we get together, we're going to work on the cover, the inside liners, and get the pages in the book. So we're almost done, well, with the book. And then we're gonna do something really fun. We're gonna build a box that this goes into, and I think you guys are really gonna like that. So hang on everyone, be back soon.